For this Jim Dine study, we are going to use some photographs of some old rusted um, tools, which are the exact sort of thing that he used to like um, doing some of his artworks from. Um, we're going to be using a pencil and we're going to be using charcoal. So it's going to be quite a straightforward drawing study. What I have done is I've prepared a background, first of all, of just um, corrugated cardboard, so an old box that I've chopped up and then I've very roughly painted over it with white paint um, to give it a really sort of worn away and old look to it. You can see it's not very neat, I've left lots of gaps here and there but I've let it thoroughly dry because um, there's no point trying to draw on this when it's still wet and sticky. So. When I first come to draw this, the first thing I'm going to look at is how big I want the spanner to be on here. So I'm going to just draw a couple of guidelines to help me to judge how big I want to draw it. And then I'm going to look at the proportions of the spanner on the photograph. So if I imagine that this rounded area here, if I imagine that that is taking up this much space, what I can then do is I can then use that measurement to look how that compares to the rest of the spanner. Now, if you look carefully, actually, you can fit one, two, three of those into the full length of that spanner. And that's really useful to know because I now know that if I split this into three sections, I know exactly how big the main part of that spanner needs to be. So that is roughly three sections. So if I put a mark there, I now know that if I start to sketch this top bit in, I know that I'm not drawing it too big or too small because I have measured the proportions. I'm doing it very sketchily and very lightly at first because I know that I will need to change it there's going to be bits that won't be right first time. So that is why I want to be able to change it if needs be. Now I need to work out how wide to make this handle. I don't want to make it too thin. I don't want to make it too fat. So again, we can compare sizes of things to help us to do that. It's called um, sighting. So if I measure the width, of that main part of the spanner, the widest part of the spanner. And then I compare that to the width of the handle. I would say that that is probably one third of that measurement. So if I was to split that into three, like that, this fits into one third of it. So I'll do the same over here. So I'll measure this and then I roughly estimate that that's about a third. So yeah, I've actually drawn that an okay width. So now I'm going to keep this line as straight as I can, but it's getting slightly broader as it's getting towards the bottom. So I'm going to try and do that. And then it goes rounded at the end got a hole that's punched into the spanner at the end there and I can look at this now and think does it look okay are there any bits that perhaps need to be slightly changed like this bit here was a bit too rounded this bit needs to come in a little bit more so I'm looking backwards and forwards between these two to help me judge whether things are in the right place or not and then I can start, now that I'm happy with that, I can start to put detail in. There's no point um, in putting detail in until that's all checked, because what if it's wrong? What if I've drawn the whole thing the wrong size and I need to rub it all out? That'd be an absolute pain. So, a little section here where the, there's like a th threaded screw there that you turn to adjust the spanner. And then this comes down, leaving equal 
hold space either side. Now because I've drawn the paint so th put the paint in so thickly and because I'm drawing on cardboard it's a little bit lumpy and bumpy so some of my lines aren't perfectly straight but that is okay because Jim Dine's work when you look at that you can see that his lines are very loose and sketchy as well. So we can try and get them as accurate as we can, but don't worry if they are a little bit wobbly here and there. So there's lettering inside there, so I am going to just try and put a little suggestion of there being some lettering. Um, when you're drawing lettering, it's really um, difficult to um, not use your own handwriting. We try and write it in our own handwriting. So I'm really just looking at the shapes that I can see and I might not even be able to see exactly what some of the letters are. So that's why I'm just doing general letter type shapes. And I may even miss some of those letters out because I can't actually see at all because they're a little bit rusty. So there's little bits of letters missing but we can tell that it's writing but we don't have to be able to read it. Now I've used a really soft pencil that's why the lines are nice and dark but what I'm actually going to do now is go over some of them and make them even darker. So around the edges where there might be shadows don't forget this is a solid object, you want it to look like it's a solid ob object sitting on a background. And we can start to give it a little bit of a smudge with our finger to make it look a bit more Jim Diney. Now when I look at Jim Dine's work, he includes the background quite a lot in his drawings as well. And my photograph here is actually taken on, um, it's on a little table um, with wooden planks. So I'm going to include some of this in there. So just an idea of where the planks are. I may even include just a little bit of the split in the wood over here. And I've even got some of these knots in the wood as well. So just a little idea of maybe a circle. And then a line coming off there. Smudge it with your finger a little bit. I'm not going to do too much because I've still got charcoal to put onto here. So charcoal out. If you've not used charcoal before, it's actually burnt wood and it's very very light but it's also very delicate. Um, if you press it too hard it will crumble and it will crush. So you do have to be quite um, careful. But it's really soft and powdery so if I were to just put a little bit around here for example and then just using my finger start to smudge that around you can get some really good effects it's almost like dust it's that powdery if you've ever seen um, like after a bonfire or after a fire and you see all the little charred bits of wood that are left at the end with the black pieces of wood. That's what this is, it's charcoal. Some artists actually make their own charcoal to draw with. They'll burn wood and then keep the leftover bits and then they'll draw with it. So we can get a little bit messy with this. So we always have to make sure we wash our hands afterwards. Don't accidentally go and touch your face when you've got charcoal all over your fingers. I'm making it look very old and worn and around the outside. I'm not going to go around the whole of it, just 
certain parts to make that spanner really stand out on the foreground there. So you could spend some more time on this putting extra detail in if you want to. You can go back into it with your pencil if any of the detail gets a little bit lost and smudges away and you can't see it. You can go back and put a little bit more detail in with your pencil. <laughs> 